Tucker kept on producing pieces that were the perfect balance of seriousness and levity, and he was not afraid to report. He did great coverage of Senator John McCain. He had a light touch. He was recognized by other outlets. He was freelancing for Esquire, Forbes, and Talk. He left the standard after the 2000 election for a TV contract at CNN. He needed the money for his growing family. His TV stardom initially peaked as co-host of Crossfire. The program was canceled in January 2005 after The Daily Show's Jon Stewart berated its hosts on air for hurting America with shallow and partisan debates. Tucker then hosted a show at MSNBC simply titled Tucker from 2005 until its cancellation in 2008. In 2009, Tucker was booed at the Conservative Political Action Conference after saying that conservatives needed their own outlets that mirrored the New York Times, dedicated to news gathering and to accuracy. And in 2010, he founded the Daily Caller with the intent to be just that kind of news organization. The rise of Donald Trump provided an opening for Tucker Carlson's return to TV stardom at Fox News. I remember this thoughtful, important essay that Tucker wrote for Politico in early 2016. Donald Trump is shocking, vulgar, and right. So Tucker saw a lot to like in Donald Trump as an anti-establishment wrecking, wrecking ball. And with few Fox News contributors willing to defend Trump early in the primary, Tucker Carlson began getting more airtime in the evening. Just before Election Day in 2016, he was named the host of the 7 p.m. show. He had the highest ratings in cable news. But his tenure as a primetime star was marked by an increasingly bizarre behavior. It became even worse after he was fired by Fox in April 2023. So the pundit who started out anti-anti-Trump, spending more time attacking Trump's enemies than defended him, after he left Fox, ended up shilling for Vladimir Putin, promoting conspiracy theories and elevating anti-Semites.